In 2019, actresses Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman were amongst 50 people charged with buying their children's admission into Ivy League colleges. They seemed to have everything, and yet they risked it all to further their social status. One bad decision ruined a seemingly perfect life overnight. So why do people make terrible decisions, and how can you hack your brain into making better ones? Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. You make about 2,000 decisions an hour, and most of the decisions that you make don't really matter, yet your brain uses 20% of your body's energy trying to make them. What should you wear today? What should you eat for dinner? Getting angry with a colleague or your partner when they question something you've done, or thinking that a friend hasn't called you back because they don't really like you. Those thoughts and actions consume less energy than stepping back and assessing the situation. And the everyday bad decisions you make are part of a pattern formation. They're habits that you don't even really think about. They all come from the brain's main goals of protecting you and preserving your energy. You see, stressful situations and negative thoughts activate an alarm system in your brain. The alarm system releases a hormone called cortisol. Sometimes cortisol is good. Is that car coming too fast? Cortisol releases and you quickly break. But too much of it at the wrong time will make you feel anxious and stressed. Thousands of years ago when we had to hunt for food and fight off predators, this was useful. But not so much right now. Because before you know it, you're getting extremely anxious because you think you've left the lights on or you're getting really angry because a colleague disagreed with you. But can one hormone really have so much control over you? Well, in short, Yes, it's got one job, and that's to make sure that you're protected and defended, even if it means getting angry with someone who just asked you a simple question. There is a way to stop this spiral, though. We call it the pushback principle, but it's also known as the bounce principle or the power of positive thinking. By noticing the negative thought, stopping that thought process or action, and thinking of a positive one instead, your brain releases dopamine, and this pushes the cortisol back. Imagine you're driving a car. You're going at 40 miles an hour, and you see something coming toward you. Instead of going straight into it, you brake, and then you get away from it. That's the pushback principle. Just recognizing that your current thought pattern or the way you're acting is an escalation is enough to stop the cortisol release. And then you can push back with a positive memory about a time when you got a compliment at work or when a friend sent you a nice message. So the pushback principle is effective for negative thoughts or for those times when you feel your blood boiling. But what about when you're perfectly happy? Why do we make bad decisions when everything seems to be going great? Well, according to psychologists, it's down to fear and desire. To survive, we need to be able to make predictions on how to avoid threats and encounter rewards. To your brain, social rewards and threats are just as powerful as physical injury and pain. And the brain hates it when it's not in control. Neuroscientists found that when the reward is high, our participation gets altered. A subconscious shift in our perception causes us to make decisions that are actually bad for us. Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman risked everything to further their social status. The reward of sending their children to an Ivy League school was greater than the risk of getting caught. The same can be said for those people who invested in Theranos, the fake health technology company founded by Elizabeth Holmes. The company raised more than 900 $45 million from investors. The DeVos family alone invested $100 million. Yet nobody saw the company's financial reports before investing. So when it comes to big decisions, massive decisions that have a high reward, how can we make sure that we make the right choice? You can be as intelligent as Elon Musk or as socially revered as Michelle Obama. It doesn't matter. An altered perception can still affect you. It can happen to anyone. Just knowing this will help you to be more self-aware. Second, before you make a big life-changing decision, talk to a friend. Lay out all of the details truthfully. This will help your brain discern the true risk and reward of your decisions, and it'll fight against the perception created by your subconscious. And lastly, think about the worst possible consequence of your decision and how that would feel. Can you handle it? How would the people in your life feel?
So we've looked at the decisions we make under stress and the decisions we make when there's a lot at stake. But you're probably here for the third kind of decision, the everyday choices that we make. The decision to get out of bed early, to work out, to eat healthy, to read a book instead of scrolling your phone for hours. We know what's good for us, so why do we decide to be lazy? In 2003, Khalil Rafati was a drug addict living on the streets of Los Angeles. He'd just been treated by paramedics after his ninth heroin overdose. He tried to get clean before, but this time he realized he would die if he didn't turn his life around. So he spent four months in rehab and threw himself into healthy living. Today, he owns Sun Life Organics and is worth millions of dollars. How did he do this? The prefrontal cortex sits right at the top of your brain, and that's where our thoughts and decisions occur. For a long time, neuroscientists thought that the value of a habit is that you don't have to think about it. But there's a part of your cortex that still has control, and you can activate it using micro-rewards. Write out your micro goal for the day and say it out loud. For every goal you reach, no matter how small, your brain releases dopamine. This helps your motivation for the next goal. For every goal you reach, no matter how small, your brain releases dopamine. This helps your motivation for the next goal. According to neuroscience, there are some other things you can do to make sure you make wise decisions. The time of day. Your brain suffers from decision fatigue. Making decisions early in the morning is the optimal time for most people. You can also reduce decision fatigue by spending less energy on easy decisions. Give yourself 30 seconds to decide whether you want to go out tonight and stick to that decision. Save your energy for the bigger choices. The people you surround yourself with also influence the decisions you make. Moran Cerf, an Israeli neuroscientist, explained that through language, our brain picks up on the behavior patterns and personalities of the people you're with. If you want to be like someone, you need to hang out with them. Elizabeth Johnson, the executive director of the Wharton Neuroscience Initiative and a visual neuroscientist, leads sessions on the way people interpret artwork differently. In her sessions, groups of three or four people discuss how each person perceives the artwork. The different interpretations help people to discover new ideas, to expand their views and form connections, which leads us to our final tip to hack your brain into making better decisions and that is through perspective taking. It's a powerful way to think outside the box, which in turn leads to better decision making overall. There's a noticeable shift in your brain when you move out of your own perspective and into someone else's. By reflecting on recent behavior or visualizing the future consequences of decisions, you can teach your brain to learn from something that hasn't actually happened. You're using your imagination to create. Hacking your brain into making better decisions won't be easy. It'll take time and a lot of energy, but if you keep doing it, you'll form a pattern, and then it'll become a habit.